Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. My most recent video training resource is titled Nine Essential Skills for Excel. I've published versions for Excel 2010 and Excel 2007. In today's lesson, I want to walk you through some wonderful productivity tips that I cover in essential skill number one, entering data efficiently. As you can see, I've created four individual video tutorials. The length of training for skill number one is nearly one half hour, and you can take the videos in any order that you wish. In order to produce accurate and meaningful reports in Excel, you first must make sure that you enter numeric values correctly. Numeric values, including dates and times that are entered correctly, align to the right side of the cell. On the other hand, an entry that aligns to the left side of the cell is a text label. So here is a text label. The time was not entered correctly. Here's a time that was entered correctly. The reason that we show a value error message is that we're attempting in Excel to take a numeric value and subtract a text label from it. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to show you how to ensure that you always enter time values using AMPM correctly. Also notice that I sprinkle my lessons with little call-outs, little comments. For example, with a fraction. Most people will go to enter a fraction, for example, three quarters by typing in three forward slash four, only to be surprised that a date shows up. Let me use control Z to undo that. So as you can see here from the tip, if I want three quarters, begin with a zero and a space, and then three forward slash four, enter, and there you go. Now, I also stress in this chapter that you want to make sure that you can distinguish between what is displayed in a cell and what Excel actually stores. So Excel is storing 0.75. In other words, it's storing a decimal value. However, we have formatted this cell to show a fraction. So enter the data correctly. Enter numeric values. Ensure that they align to the right side of the cell. And then change the format to suit. Now, I also am a big believer in keyboard shortcuts. So if you want to create a date stamp, use this keyboard shortcut for the current date control semicolon and again notice that it aligns to the right side of the cell if you want a timestamp use control shift and colon and again notice that it aligns to the right side of the cell now here's the tip for always entering time correctly type in the hour for example one colon to separate the hour from the minutes let's say 30 and then use a space and a small AM or PM, in other words, an A or a P in lowercase. I'll use control enter. So you see now I have correctly entered a time and it aligns to the right side of the cell. If I had made even one little change in there, for example, put a period in here, notice that it aligns to the left side of the cell. So hour, colon, minutes, space, and then a lowercase a or a lowercase p. And you will always have your time entered in correctly. Now, what I want to do is I want to also show you how you can reveal what is stored in a cell. So here we have the current date. If I use the keyboard shortcut control tilde, you see that Excel is actually storing a serial number in there for a date. And this is the number of days that have elapsed since Excel began keeping track of time on January 1st, 1900. Likewise, for uh, current time, they're stored as a decimal value. In other words, a percentage of 1. So 12 noon would be stored as 0.5. 50% of the day has elapsed at 12 noon. And control tilde is a toggle. Now, let me move on to the concept that I spend the most time in this uh, first skill, taking advantage of autofill. Built into Excel, we have lists for the months of the year and also for the days of the week. 
Now, with the days of the week, what you want to do is, if you don't want to include Saturday and Sunday, take advantage of the autofill option. So when you release your autofill, when you release the mouse, click on the autofill options. And now, to fill the weekdays only, click, and you only have Monday through Friday. I also cover several other ways to use the autofill. I, I, I really cover this in depth. I, I just feel that you will save so much time and improve your accuracy when you take advantage of autofill. Now, many people are surprised that when they autofill a date, we get an increment in the series. In other words, it increments one day at a time. So when they come over and they say, well, all right, I'm expecting this to increase in a series. Well, you get a copy. So understanding what the default setting is when you autofill, here is a quick way that you can change the default setting of making a copy. If you hold down control before you autofill, you reverse. So in other words, we're reversing the default setting, which is to make a copy and turning it into an increment of a series using a step value of one. When you want to increment a series using a different step value, in other words, a step value of five, all you have to do is type in the two values that indicate the step value for your series, and then select both before you autofill. So if you want a step value of three, type those two values in in contiguous cells, and then select both of them, and then copy them down. So you can fill a series of dates, a series of times. If you autofill a time, you get several options from the autofill options. Uh, fill a series, fill the formatting, but what if you wanted to have a series that, let's say, incremented by 30 minutes? So in this case, hour, colon, uh, the minutes, 30, space and then a lowercase p. So now here is our series that we want to increment by. And now we have a nice schedule that increments one half hour at a time. One of the real gems in Excel that I find that many people have never discovered is the fill series dialog box. Let's just say that I wanted to use a step value of five and have the series end when it reaches 100. Now, instead of going through and typing five and 10 and then clicking and then hoping that we drag down sufficiently, all we have to do is begin with a single cell selected. Then over here in the editing group, open up the fill series dialog box. So click on series. And in the dialog box, what we want to do is I'm going to select columns because I want to copy the series going down vertically in the column. When I use linear, it means that I want to use addition. Growth would use multiplication. So my step value in this case will be 5. And I want to put a stop value in there of 100. And now click OK. And there you go. Those values are filled and they reach a step value or a stop value of 100. So that's a really terrific uh, trick that you can learn. I also show you how to create custom lists that you can use to autofill. Now, this is, again, just touching over the, the highlights of one half hour's worth of training. I hope that you will take a look at my resources, and I'm so confident that you're going to uh, purchase this product that I allow you to download the 29-page uh, information guide for uh, nine essential skills for Excel. Very easy to do. All you have to do is go over on to my website. My website is shop.thecompanyrocks.com. And if you go over into the free resources from the company rocks, you'll be able to download keyboard shortcut charts as well as the instructional guide for either version 2007 or Excel version 2010. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.